Uh, now, I just can somebody confirm with me what screens we're seeing? Is I'm the seeing the screen? PowerPoint. Okay, just how about now? PowerPoint. How about now? I switched it over. So you're seeing the full yep. screen now? Oh, wonderful. Yep. Perfect. We've got it. Thank you again so much, everyone. Uh, really appreciate your patience with us as we uh, we move through some of the technical difficulties. So I want to welcome you all to uh, this is really uh, we're calling this a continued discussion, but it really is um, kind of a part two of a broadcast we did earlier in the year uh, where we we touched on uh, our presenters touched on several uh, elements related to the impacts of trauma on the brain. And we we had to sort of uh, rush through things at the end because there was so much. Uh, uh, Teresa had put together so much information that we just didn't have a chance to go a little deeper. So we have uh, invited uh, Dr. Dan Foster back, and we also have with us uh, Dr. Uh, Rebecca Foster, who's going to join uh, Dr. Foster, I think, on the couch there at some point. And then we have, uh, of course, Teresa Sue Brill, who is the lead lecturer for this presentation. So really happy to have you all here. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Steve Steine. I'm one of the uh, managers here at the National American Indian Alaska Native HTC. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple of slides, and then I'm going to turn the floor over to our presenters and we will get started off in the, the right way. If it'll let me advance these slides now. There we go. <clears throat> As most of you know, this event is brought to you by the National American Indian Alaska Native Addiction and Technology Transfer Center. We are located at the University of Iowa. We are part of a larger national network made up of 10 regional centers, a National Hispanic and Latinx Center, as well as a National Coordinating Office located at the University of Missouri. Again, uh, as most of you are aware, this project is supported and funded by SAMHSA. The content is developed by the presenters and the opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect the views or policies of SAMHSA, HHS, or the American Indian Alaska Native Addiction Technology Transfer Center. And just want to remind everyone that we will make these links and recordings available to you post event. Uh, we will reach out to you uh, via email with a follow up um, to you. Uh, if you are registered for this event, you will receive a follow up email. If you're interested in um, receiving CEUs for this event, we are going to offer two NADAC approved CEUs. Um, I would just remind everyone that if you would like those CEUs, you must respond to that follow-up email and you must request your CEUs through that email. That'll help our uh, small team here be able to track and monitor and make sure you receive those CEUs accordingly. Um, just be patient with us. We are asking for uh, uh, four to six weeks to get you that certificate because our staff is limited. If you are uh, under a time crunch to receive those CEUs, please reach out to us directly and we'll see if we can expedite uh, getting you that certificate of completion. Lastly, there will be a link today that I will place in the uh, chat area. Uh, there's also a QR code you can see on the screen here. Um, this is just a brief survey. You're not required to complete this. You can skip any questions you would like. It's completely confidential and can't be linked to you in any way. Um, we've added a couple of short answer questions to this survey so we can hear in your own words directly from you uh, feedback. Um, your feedback is important to us and it also helps support and um, uh, make possible future presentations uh, such as this through our funder. So we appreciate your feedback. Please consider completing that short survey either today or when you receive this in the follow-up email. I know we're gathered here virtually today, but we would like to take uh, the time, uh, just a few moments here to 
acknowledge the land and pay respect to the indigenous nations whose homelands were forcibly taken and inhabited. Please take a few moments to read this land acknowledgement that was created by three former members of our team, Ella and Keeley Driscoll and Sean Pear. Thank you. Well, without further ado, I would like to now uh, present our speakers today. Um, I have with us, uh, as many of you have uh, heard her speak before, she's done uh, a lot of work with us in, over the past couple of years. Uh, my colleague and friend, Teresa Subril. She is uh, one of our consultants with our center and also serves on our Addictions Advisory Council. Happy to have her here today. And I also have with us uh, uh, Dr. Dan and Becky Foster. They are both here with us today. Uh, uh, Dan Foster serves as an advisory council member and as a senior consultant for our center. And uh, Becky Foster also serves as a senior consultant for our center. We're really happy to have both of them here uh, uh, with us. And I will let each of them share a little bit more about uh, themselves as we get started. So again, I want to thank everyone for joining us. We're going to try and cover quite a bit of material. <clears throat> so hopefully we'll have a little time at the end to do some questions and answers, and we may try and run over just about 10 minutes since we got started 10 minutes late, but let's see how this goes. So I'm going to pull down these slides that took me forever to get up there, and let's try and um, uh, get started here. So I'm going to turn the floor over to uh, Dan to see if he would like to get us started off in a good way. Thank you. I'm with Dr. P. Dan Foster, Machapelo. Uh, Evelyn, good to have you on board. Becky's gonna come in and we'll we'll open with a, with a song. Uh, it's been a, a very uh, tough year for many of us. And, and we've always known that grief informs us about life, the positive and the negative uh, matter. And so we welcome all of you from, from all over. We, uh, this is uh, my wife, Becky. We're gonna give a, a, a Wopila, a, a Thanksgiving song. Uh, today, it's very, it's bitterly cold here as it is in much of the Northern Plains, uh, plus the wind is blowing. And we, we were not able, we tried for 20 minutes to get on. So we weren't able to get on for quite a while. So thank you. Those of you who stayed and had their patience. I guess we, since we ran behind, we should just jump into this and get started. <laughs> um, so if we can move through these slides here, I'm gonna talk a little bit on, I hope you all can hear me well. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit on, um, this came to me probably, I don't know, I don't remember anymore. I'd have to look back around three and five years ago, it occurred to me about trauma's impacts to the brain. I was thinking of solutions. I was thinking of what happened to our people. I was thinking about the barriers we're hitting, the states of emergencies we're in, why things aren't working, therapy just isn't working. And some of the people are doing everything they possibly can. And it they're just hitting this wall and what's going on and I, I spend a lot of time in the woods I spend a lot of time going to spirit you know and boots to the ground with the people spent since my late teens with the traditional elders and you know listening to them <clears throat> they would bring me into and bring so much to me 
and bring the people. So I would reflect back at all of that. And I have some education and I just, you know, I, so many experiences started thinking. And what was coming to me was similar to a, a CTE. So kind of like punch drunk, if you don't know what a CTE is. And so when we go through traumas, how it hits us and how it reverberates through our system and being. And, and you know, the way I come from, I'm, I'm indigenous, I'm traditional. And so I'm coming from this traditional thinking, but I understand this other world, this Western or clinical world. And to translate that and the cycles, we understand cycles and interconnectedness. So what this is doing to our people and what we're really juggling and dealing with. And then when you're looking at our people, how we seek counsel or help or healing, what we are expecting when we, because this is how we would go about it, this holistic, you know, whether advocacy is needed, safety plans are needed, diet changes, are, we look at the whole. And when we look at Western or clinical, there's this disconnect. So now you want this person to make another appointment, another appointment. You know, you go see human services, you go see the advocate, you go see the counselor, you go see, you know, and you got them going to the doctor and they're already tired. The fact that they came forwards. So we're giving up. They lose will, they give up. So what can we do? And how can we empower and help our helpers helping our people? What can we do? And how can we find it? How can we prove it? And then are, are we stuck there? We believe in healing. We believe in the balance teachings. We believe in um, creator in, in, in the universal law. So if you develop a disability, we can fix this disability. Maybe not fix it, so to speak. You may still have the disability, but you're going to have a new tool. You're going to have a new way to move through. You're going to be rebalanced. And so how can we do that? Can the brain heal itself? How do we support its healing? You know, and in the time in between, what kind of thinking can we utilize? What can we grab onto that will make us healthy and balanced and clear and focused and be able to function in a good way without more problems? So I understand in a good way that we need to, we need to back what we're talking about. So th these are these slides here. And if we could go on to the next slide. So we're going to kind of, uh, I talked with Doc Foster, Dan and his wife, Becky, both Doc Fosters. Um, and we decided that, and, and it was their best advice. Let's just zip through the, the first two thirds of the slides because on the part one, we really didn't get to cover the last third pretty well. We were, I was talking like an auctioneer going through it. <laughs> and so we're going to really talk like an auctioneer, I guess, through the first two thirds this time. But I put a link in the chat if you want to watch the first part and catch up. But you can have access to the slide deck. Since they're backed up down at the center, you're welcome. I, I'll put my email in there to email me, and I can email you the first slide deck and or this slide deck here. It's the same slide deck. And I'll get it to you quicker maybe since they're backed up down at the center with people on vacation and whatnot. Um, so we're going to zip through these. Can we jump on the next slide? And I always ask uh, both Doc Fosters to interrupt me whenever spirit is moving them to share, just in case they get called away or their internet gets lost. I, we, I think it's important to hear what they got to share. Um, so this is the, a lifespan of trauma. So when we're thinking about our people in a new country, whether it is, oh, miigwech, that is my email right there. Um, when we're thinking about whether, and I'm talking urban Indians, I'm talking on the res, I'm talking, you know, out in the county, I'm talking any kind of indigenous person just because of generational trauma, what goes into what they call our DNA. So science is looking at DNA, but the way we see things is in another way, but it is, we're all talking about the same thing here, okay? So it impacts us, it attaches to us, and we've got to break this. In our prophecies, we're talking about breaking these cycles, and we're talking about getting our teachings and our ways back, picking up the seeds our ancestors left us, our old ones left us along the path. So through that, basically, um, to sum it up, is a lot of healing and a lot of taking back. But we also have this generational trauma, and my dad would call it innate knowledge. So we have both. And so we have to sort out that generational trauma and we got to 
get back to that innate knowledge and utilize that innate knowledge to help us sort out that generational trauma. So, so when we look at it, we're thinking about our statistics, we're thinking about how much in a lifespan does an Indigenous person go through? What does our bodies um, have to deal with? I was talking with the grandma last night. She's a Anishinaabek and, a, and Ottawa and some other tribes from the, from, uh, the lower Michigan area. And she was sharing about her diagnoses, the autism and the attention deficit disorder and uh, all these other issues she's dealing with. And, I, and she's in her 60s. And I said, oh, I said, that's interesting. And I said, but every what they call an autistic person, and we see this different, is um, a little bit different. And where it is enhanced inside their brain, that's how it might look on an MRI, right? Kind of an, a really lit up area of the brain. And she had talked about her sensories was an issue. She, but it's a gift. It is a gift to have somebody in our community that has this, what some might think is hyperactive sensories. But if we don't learn in these times, back in the day, our elders would have recognized that as a gift and worked with you on how to work with that gift and take care of self and things like that. But today we see it in a different way and many aren't learning that. So it takes a toll because there's not the balance going on, the care going on, and how to shut, not so much shut down the gift, but how to say not right now, not right now. And so I says, um, I'm, you know, and as you think about the body and the system and how this is flowing and what's happening with her type of gift or disability, depending on which word we're talking, I said, I bet you have after overall this time, then you have things like fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, you know, and I went on down the line at every one of them. She says, oh, my gosh, severely. And here this is because this is the impacts and the flow of things, right? The interconnectedness of it. So we understand our people. We understand what they're going through. We just call it and see it in a different way. And we do believe that there's a way to work with them and uh, help them and help them through it and even help heal after many, many years. Sometimes you're left with some scars and damages, but so when we're looking at a lifespan of going through all of this, it takes its toll, but the interconnectedness of that toll. So it goes, swings back to mental health. And then it swings back to body because the body is, is, is translating, is talking to ourselves, all the different parts of our body is trying to tell us something's going on, whether it's butterflies in your stomach or something else, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response. It's trying to talk to us. And after a while, we don't listen anymore sometimes and sometimes it, it, it starts to scream at us and we develop other illnesses but then what brings us down a notch again but it also makes us vulnerable again and we can become a statistic again so the mind is trying to interpret it from how many different blows it's like a war zone going on in there eh? and the damages that it creates and are we resting properly so when the brain gets to flesh this new day we are we're told in our teachings a new day a fresh start did we get that fresh start? Did we go through that process, through that rest, through that diet, through that peace as we closed our eyes? So what is happening then to our health is it didn't get the flesh properly. So we translate that into modern medicine or Western or clinical. And how does that look? But we see where that buildup is, where, where the matter starts to take matter, starts to create physical illness. And again, the interconnectedness and the flow of it. So if we could jump onto the next slide. So a lot of times we, 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 we got brought in the way our people are, our warriors never suffered PTSD. <laughs> our warriors were people of peace and really didn't want to go to war. But when it, when peace needed to be restored, our warriors did, but they went back to that place of peace. They understood what they did, why they did it and what it was for. They had the biggest hearts, the biggest hearts. Warriors is just an example right now. So what I'm talking about here is when we had the colonization come, when we had the residential schools come, we had this learn behavior come that we don't talk about things, but our people did. We knew each other's business and it wasn't to gossip. It was to help, to support, to nudge, to protect, to say enough, to take a stand. We knew each other's business in a good way. Now we're the opposite of these people because of this different way that was brought in on us, but we're still the people to find our way back again, like the prophecies say.
So what happens over here in this Pasquabi or outside of the circle way, this off-balanced way? So what happens over here then? The system again is trying to talk to us, trying to bring us back to balance. It's trying to holler, hey, this is an issue. Hey, this is... But we're coming from what perspective that was built in. So then finally around the 80s, early 90s, they brought in counseling and they told us we can talk. That was wonderful. It was a good thing. And people had built up of generations of stuff. One incident after another built up. So this built up pent up stuff, how much was released, which became the norm. And then when you start to heal from this, you realize this is it normal that I've been accepting and more starts to come out. More starts to come out. This All this stuff that's been done in sight starts to come out. But our people also knew grief and that there's a time and place for grief and there's a time to let it go and move on. We didn't, we, we didn't keep holding on to this past here. We moved on forward. We didn't give this monster here or this nightmare here. We won't even tell stories of some of the bads we know about because it could call in that spirit. So we don't hold on to this grief forever, this badge of victim programming, victim mentality. But it's nothing to be ashamed of. See, there's the difference. We run away, we run away with things in the wrong direction. So the programming that has become is, oh, it can take a lifetime to heal. Well, yeah, because after something comes up, you, you start to learn this new perspective and see things in a new light and then something else and then something else. But the thing is, if you are truly doing the healing, and that's the, the, the second half of it that they're leaving out. When we're truly doing the healing, we're finding our peace with it. The what is, and we let go. We see our blessings in front of us. And we're engaging in that. So this is okay. But when we are told to hold on to this, this isn't the ways of our people. And we get stuck into this place. And when we're stuck into this place, how does that translate with our minds and our chemistry and our perspectives and our physical illnesses that we're suffering? So this prolonged that's going on, attitude is everything. Attitude is everything. <laughs> So it's going to open up our perspectives and it's going to come to a place that this is okay. This is okay to move on from. When we're identifying ourselves today, we were retaught how to identify ourselves. And we wonder why we have these identity disorders and these wounded egos and these new standards of being one just like each other, this trendiness. But we were so about individualism. So one approach doesn't work for everybody. And that approach that's working for your individual or group might not continue to work because as we grow in our down our path, our teachers sometimes changed. The lessons sometimes change and that's good. It needs to be if we can jump onto the next slide. So I hope you're following me in this way. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying about translate this into therapy approaches, translate this into the next teacher. And, and moving them forward into the next place. So this here, this one gets into, um, and this is where the next slides are getting into, what I'm basically doing here is walking you through what is happening to a being when they're going through trauma or remembering a trauma, okay? And so this isn't just the, this is the initial, so what some would call programming or the event, but it is also the what triggers later, triggers. So what's reminding them of, if, and so our elders, when we would see somebody triggered, you know, today they say, oh, you're shaming them or you're provoking them or this or that. But we would push and nudge a person if we saw a weakness in them. Not to be a bully or be bad. It is because these weaknesses, would you could be preyed upon by spirit. It could make us vulnerable to the enemies. And it, and it makes us so we can't be our best versions of ourselves. And we needed our people in order to be a people and thrive to each be the best versions of themselves. So we'll jump on to the next one. The next slide. So here, this is what the Western and the clinical. Now, in our ways, we didn't uh, dissect each other. We're able to see sickness inside of each other. We're able to understand the history of that sickness, where it came from, and all of that. But we, we see these areas of the brain. We understand that, if, that maybe you have a heaviness here. Now, it depends. This would be a whole lifetime of a conversation to explain to you how different people with their different gifts are shown and see and understand. But we do understand these places of the brain that are having issue. 
And we understand what that issue is and how to work with them. But when we're talking to an audience that are mostly therapists and this is their understanding, then we're let's speak your language here. And this is the same thing. We're talking the same thing, but this is then your language. So this is now the pathway of when an event occurs, the parts of the brains that are being impacted or activated or things like this, right? So this is what we're looking at here. And if we can jump onto the next slide. And then here we're talking about when we start looking at the glands, we start looking at those glands. We're looking at, to us, in, in my ways, I guess, and I can't speak for all of my medicine people and all of my spiritual people and all of my dreamers, but it almost looks like a thunder being, eh? The central nervous system. And we start looking at the glands and things like that. Now we think about the wolf. <gasps> We think about the scent. We think about the healthy of, did you ever hunt a deer and stress them out? You didn't get that kill really clean. <laughs> and those glands and the adrenaline that go in what it does to the meat. So you think about all these different kinds of things in whatever context that helps you best understand and best process, because we can have this understanding. Even those Yeshua or Jesus teachings says we could all do the things he could do. Yes, we all can. You may not be a medicine person. You may not be a spiritual person. You may not have the same gifts, but we all can understand. And we can understand that if the person is having these kind of issues, you better believe they're going to have some other kind of health issues by the time it got to this point. And these health issues are going to re-trigger. The cycle is going to go through. So if we don't address all of the needs and the issues. So now we're looking at diet. We're looking at environmental changes. We're looking at, we need to look at what is the real issues. They might need advocacy. It might be due to bullying at the school or lateral violence. We can't change and fix everything, but we can help them. How can they go through it and be able to be okay through it? And it not takes them like this. Let's go on to the next slide. So this is how we get into it. And you're looking at this here and you're seeing. Now, when, as we're looking at this, because this is the flow. This is the flow here, right? And so when you think about it, you see the flow now. If you ever watch somebody, watch somebody go through a trauma moment. Fight, fight, freeze, fawn. I don't care which one. All of them. Think back to all of them if you got the time. Each one of them. Give yourself examples of each one. And then as each one, think of more examples of each one and see how many have a common thread going on here. So then you think about the really sad moment. You think about the scary moment. You think about the bully moment, the terrified. You think all these different kind of emotional moments. And the different parts of the body is going to work the different parts of those emotions, where they're coming through. And the individual, how that individual uh, pushes through. Do they put it in their gut? Do they take it to the chest? Do they put it in their back and tips up up here? What kind of person they are, how they carry through their moments because then this is where we're going to look at what kind of health problems are coming through on them right and so when we look at these health problems and we're looking through their system here see how many stomach problems do we have in digestional problems in Indian country let's go and think about that one let's think about that one and when we're talking about that one we're talking about absorbing nutrients and not able to get rid of the toxins so now we're talking about again chemical imbalances in the brain and the system and how are they able to heal and then really to assess and process a moment properly and not attach it to some other trauma and become self-destructive in that moment or, or overreact in a moment or underreact in a moment because they can't trust their, their own self and their environment at that point. So how is all interconnected here? So the importance of looking at all of these things. And then we look at things like the liver. How many liver problems do we have? Uh, then we look at the bladder. We have overactive bladders, leaky bladders. We have how many heart diseases, high blood pressure, strokes, cholesterol issues. And we look at the, the vision. The, the, uh, the, uh, when I did part one, I thought I had that moment of, geez, why didn't I think of about that? Because the eyes, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, don't your pupils constrict? 
<laughs> don't they dilate at times? And so how does the how does the eyeballs work? And it goes back into the brain and, and the brain's thinking about these things. So all of this, again, is interconnected. We're going to have problems. And I went and talked to a couple eye doctors about it. Then I found a neural study came out. I think, what was it, a month or two later? Steve and Doug Boston might remember because I ended up sending it to them. Proving it, gosh darn it. So thankful for those doing that science to back this up here. Because to me, it isn't, oh, no, look at us. We're really in a, in a pickle. It's the next part of it. We can heal from it. So now, no, it's 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 proving that we have this issue. And it's proving then now we can go forwards in the healing part of it. That's where it's exciting here. So we're looking at cancers. We're looking at how many problems we got here, right? Um, we're looking at... Uh, we're looking at the diabetes or looking at all these kind of issues. I know when I get stressed out, I'm, I'm type two, you know, severe stress under severe duress. I become type two um, pre-diabetic. And otherwise, my sugars levels stay good. I could even go without food. So our bodies are, are responding, are taking hits and pulls and things like that. Let's jump to the next part. So this is this is now getting into um, some of the areas of the body that we're this and this is more the stressor chemicals and things like that. But hey, heartbreak as well. We have how much going on in Indian country, uh, loss of a loved one, all these different kind of types of griefs going on. And that also hits these different organs and areas. Right. So we develop these problems. And when we develop these problems, our body is like a wonderful computer. It wants to function for us so we can go on and, and move this life without having to constantly pay and paying attention to it. But it's going to go back to a pattern that was created. So again, this what they call being consistent, being consistent with something and having to be very conscious and cognitive about it and, and then staying consistent with it 110% because this is what's going to help to what they call reprogramming or reconnect and disconnect. Disconnect from the issue and reconnect to what is natural, healthy, and being in line and in balance and functional in a good way with what you can do until you can do better. Let's jump onto the next slide. So again, now we're looking at how it's going through again. And these are more parts of the brains and the movements. So, you know, they're here, here it's showing you the stress signal. So it's breaking it down. And it's really fun because many of our therapists today in Indian country who are native, even, even I have a friend who is, uh, his parents were, both of his parents were Holocaust survivors. And he went to UW Stanford, got his PhD over there in psychology. He lives in Portugal now. So I, so you don't have to be native is what I'm saying. You could be non-native, you could be white and you can have this history, right? You could be black, you could be Mexican, you could have, be Chinese, look what they're going through right now over there. We can observe ourselves to see the truth in it and put our money where our mouth is and implement those needed changes. Now, no, what worked for you may not work for another. They have a different system. But this is where you help them get into their own therapy, their own programming and see choice. And then what's going to help them and what's going to really work and what isn't. And now that's called accountability because now they know truth. <laughs> they know what is helping them. Are you going to stick with it? And now are you going to go to the next step with it? Let's jump on the next one. So they're involved in their healing. And this is how it should be involved in the, what, what people call program with their, their plan. So this is here is talking about these impacts of stress here. And, uh, and that's just on the brain. But remember, your brain is talking to your whole body. And your whole body through the chemicals it's releasing is triggering parts of your brains to wake it up and say, hey, 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 I'm trying to have a talk with you. And the brain is answering back here. So the brain isn't just the brain, it's the whole body. Right? So when we're thinking about this here, and we're thinking about what's going on here, and you're looking well now look, I want you to look at this picture. It's kind of nifty. I like that about science. I never thought the day would come I would say I like science. I always think of the scientists and my elders did too as these children who are just 
over here fumbling with the toy and they keep throwing it away. They keep throwing away the answer, the solution, and they're sitting here fumbling. They're so far behind developmentally, but they're catching up. And then and you think they're getting there and you're like, come on, and you're cheering them on. And so anyways, I really appreciate them now. And here's that day I, I can say that I really appreciate them. But look at this picture now. You think about them fight, flight, freeze, fawn, chemicals, any kind of situation you ever been in, you didn't have to be through some serious dysfunctional trauma. It could have been a near car accident. It could have been a, a scary horror story you've been watching on the TV, Freddy Krueger back in the day and your heart was a thumping. You can, so you can relate and think about those very, very powerful chemicals that are flowing through your body, make your whole body feel like you're going to pee your pants, your whole body feel like I'm going to fight this, I can lift this car up, a mother with, with the strength you wouldn't believe to lift the car off a baby. And so these are powerful chemicals. And those chemicals are wonderful, they're trying to help you. But if you're in a stressful situation, you're put under duress, you're put under dysfunction, you're put under racism, you're put under lateral violence, whatever it is, you're getting put under injustice after injustice. These chemicals are flowing through day after day and then you're dreaming about it, your brain's trying to cleanse it. So it's going through the system and look at that. There, that's delicate in there. Oh, it's strong and healthy, this one, but it's delicate. If you look off far off to the right on the image there, you can see some areas where it's kind of brownish and it's lost, it's the pink, it's lost, it's vibrancy, it's health. You could see that you can see those chemicals start to impact over there at the very ends where those neuroreceptors start to connect. Spark thought start, start. This is where it is wakening up it is areas of the brain kind of like in the universe we think everything's interconnected in our teachings and in the stars so we jump on to the next one and this goes a little more into it here and this also is going into to proving these impacts in the brain right and so we can jump on to the next one And then this it gets all into more the long term stress and the children that are exposed. So now we're looking at generational or just yourself growing up in it. And then now you end up in this uh, relationship or maybe you got out of it. You made a better life for yourself and you made a family and your family is is doing good and you're not repeating the cycles but you're working over at that tribal center and god darn it if there isn't lateral violence or you're working and murdered and missing maybe and god darn it if you aren't seeing the injustice after injustice and you're feeling helpless so again you're still being put under these stressors in these positions almost all of our elders if not all who who persevered and went through what they went through from residential school to the orphanage trains to things like this to the racism in the communities when they did get to come back home to maybe a lot of them had yeah a lot had abusive parents things like this abusive spouses things like this and then their children that they had ended up trying to crutch and got into drugs and geez does they ever get a break meanwhile they were getting us youth centers they were getting us elder centers they were getting us schools they were getting us rights that were outlawed to the 1970s they were getting locked up in prison they were getting threatened at gunpoint so they knew nothing but stress and because of this because of this they're no longer here our life expectancies the health of it so when we don't address the whole issue they're still going down and they know it and so now here that goes back into the mind right when we think about the mind we think about the physiological, the psychological, the spiritual, the emotional. What are they really dealing with? So you feel like you're, they're on a hamster wheel with you, your client. So what can we really do? You know, and sometimes we got we to gotta not beat around the bush with them, right? Here are your options that we can see. What else options can you see? But this is what I'm seeing. In order for us to have the best quality of life, if this is the life that we're going to have. What can we do? And what can we do to heal ourselves at this point? If we can jump onto the next slide. So those of you that know about the prefrontal cortex and things like that, and we start looking at things like, um, like I said, identity disorder, ego issues. So it, it looks like so much narcissism. 
I know that's so taboo to say because people say that we don't want to work with the narcissist because geez, you, you're not going to get nowhere with them and they're going to turn on you and play you and stuff. But are they truly a narcissist? It just is looking like it. What got, if you even think about a narcissist, what got a narcissist to where they are today? Okay. What happened to them? So this is the real underlying issue. Now we say we got to help our youth and save our youth, save our youth, but what are our youth going home to? So we have to help them at home. So now we're looking at family. We're looking at family and we're looking at individual and accountability and what can we do and making better choices, better diet choices. We're going to need everything we can to support this individual for them to support themselves and their family, right? Because this is a, a, a real issue if we're not taking care of it. If we're taking care of it, then boy, we got a chance at a life maybe that they never even know. So this is a good thing then that it's coming to surface. If we can jump onto the next slide. And so here's what I'm talking about, the central nervous system. Here's what I'm talking about right here. Don't that look like a thun, one, one of the thunder beings? There's a few different types of thunder beings. There's families of them and things like that. <laughs> this is what looks kind of like one of them. But this is what I'm talking about. We develop, a, some people have a gift. They can, they can pick up on things, boy. They can, they can sense things like that. And people are lying to themselves or just plain liars. Hustlers, game players that we're talking about, what you're talking about in the country, you're talking about the community off the reserve, or you're just talking about lateral violence, or you're talking about dysfunctional family, or you're talking about, you know, all these different things they're dealing with. So they're, if they're not being honest with themselves and you're picking up on them, then you start to distrust your gifts. But a hyper sense of awareness is what some people would call it. But that's just a gift. And we just learn how to balance that gift out. And so what happens then if uh, you've been put, put in a situation that you have to become hyper aware? Because if I hear that bastard's footsteps, excuse my French. <laughs> if I hear that abuser's footsteps coming down the hallway, and this is I'm speaking for the children that were in the residential school, and I'm talking about that priest. Or I'm talking about that young kid whose parent was abusing them or that uncle who was abusing them, right? So I'm trying to make like that child, right? Or make like the mother that's talking for that child or make like when I say that like that. But you hear that footsteps come in down the hallway. It allows this individual, whether it's an adult, a woman from domestic violence, whether it's a child and it's their parent or the priest, whoever it is, the monster coming. They're coming on that hallway. You have this heightened sense of awareness because it's going to help them either to shut down, to run away, to numb themselves so they're not going to feel the pain, things like this. It's going to, their, their, their system wants to protect them. And they're going to do everything they can. But what happens is they develop a hyper sense of awareness if they didn't have the natural gift to, to protect them. So now we got to work with them because now they got a gift. Now they got a gift. It isn't a curse. It's a gift, sweetheart. And so it's it's only it's only going to work against them if it's been off balance. And that's why you look at this image here and you're going to think about all these powerful chemicals all the way down to the very ends. And what's at the ends there? It's fingertips, toes, knees, joints. What is at the end there? Because where does the electricity go to? Where does these chemicals go to and set if we're not cleansing all the way through, if we're not having the flow? Where is it going to settle? So we're looking at this and that's where we're having fibromyalgias, we're having rheumatoid arthritis over type, we're having things like this intestinal stomach cancer, where is this going to? See, so that's why we have to look at the whole and we have to look at the real story and the real image and the real, the real picture and what they're really dealing with and if they've been given a new gift. Let it be a gift. Let's work with that gift. And it isn't a curse. This is wonderful. What is the safety plan? What is the healthy boundary? This is the first thing I would jump to. Are you still in it? What else is going on? Okay, because your gift is going to keep coming up, keep coming up, even though you're out of that situation where the gift developed. Now it's how many years later and you're in that one. So safety plan, healthy boundaries. How do we say no? Is it okay to say no and not feel guilty? Now let's look at what's going on at home. Is home peaceful or is it dysfunctional? What can we do about that? And we're going to assess the situation because, again, safety, 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 healthy balance. What can we do? 
And then we're going to look at the situation. And we're gonna, after we get to all of that, we're going to be looking at what are you eating, honey? <laughs> we're looking at what you're juggling. So we know what kind of chemicals and, and issues you're having with health and stuff like that. What are you eating? So now let's get a diet that supports one healing the damages that's going on because you're going to have a cycle that keeps playing around, playing around, playing around. So we got to stop that cycle. We got to break that cycle first. And then, so we're going to help to heal that with that diet there. And then we're going to also look at, we're also going to look at a diet that's conducive of the life that they're stuck in. Cause maybe they're stuck in that life. They can't quit that job or the kid has to keep going to school and the bullying, they can't stop all the bullies. So let's make a diet conducive of that. But first let's stop the cycle. So we have to have that healing diet. Then we have to look at that, you know? And so then we also look at what, what, what spiritual aspects is going on for them. Now, this is something maybe you don't have that gift Maybe you don't have those teachings. So this is where we would say, what about, you know, an elder, you feel like you can go talk to a medicine person, spiritual person, a dreamer, things like this. So you're going to refer them out, right? And it, in, in a lot, often time, our people don't know who they can go to. They don't know of anybody or they don't trust the ones that are out there, validly so. Okay, then this is how we come together. We should have these resources. We should start figuring out, we should get to know these people. So we can honestly, and, and our people in any country will read your face. Oh, they'll read you. <laughs> and when they see that they can trust that you look like you, this person really is good that they don't know, but you met, they'll sit with them. They'll sit with them. They'll go check them out. Might take them a little while. They're going to keep feeling you and feeling you on it. But they're going to go sit with them. We have to deal with all aspects here on how to care for yourself sometimes maybe it's taking a cedar bath but it depends on the tribe that's going to help them cleanse after school or after work where the lateral violence is or things like that or if you're a helper helping our people you're a therapist you too you too because it took a toll on our our elders who did what you're doing now and we need you around so you too so we could jump onto the next slide here and, and the fibromyalgias and all that is just just parts of it boy we got more than that that's all connected through that because of that that is indicative of indicative of so when you backtrack when you have this diagnosis or you have this issue backtrack backtrack follow the tracks like our warriors would follow those tracks back okay because then you're going to get back to more than likely uh psychological uh in event something going on so here's some images of what they're seeing when they take images of the brain, what they call depression, attention deficit, bipolar, this attention deficit disorder. Okay, this is just one example, okay, but to think about it from our perspective and things, okay. This attention now, this isn't for everybody and nothing is ever black and white. I'm trying to summonate a whole lot here. And ever you want me to talk about it and us really get in depth on any one of these topics, reach out to me. And if I don't know the answer, I'm going to find somebody if I don't know somebody that you could talk to. Okay. This attention deficit disorder, when we're sitting here for an example in the past, in some trauma, and I'm and I'm a survivor of and we're relating everything to are we in our moment? Now think about neurowiring. Think about our brain programming. What part of your brain are you off into? And how have you just wired your brain to keep being over here, keep being over here, keep being over here, keep having these discussions of over here and not here. So then every time you come here, everything's related to over here because you're still attached to it. So why can't you focus on right here? So when we say that this that it's okay to hold on to our victim card, Hold on to our survivor card. What are we really holding on to? Did our old ones hold on to that stuff or let it go? What is our ways on this topic? And at what point, at what point, oh, you have to hold on to it at first when you're facing it. You're going to more than hold on to it. You're going to grab onto it like a warrior. <laughs> and you're going to let that flow right through you. But here's the thing. You're not riding it out and going into it. Oh, no, no, no. You're not going to step in their world of ugliness. You're letting it flow through out of you. Yeah. And then you're going to let them go. You're going to let them go. Oh, you're dropping that dead body. <laughs> you're done. See, there is a difference. So PTSD, do you have your peace with it? Do you have your peace with it? And how can you make your peace with it? 
you know, I, I, I met a, a Diné Vietnam vet years ago, and this is what they did. Now, I can't remember what he told me, but I had described to what come to me for, for him, what he had needed to do in the place and all that. And he had told me I, a ghost, I think it's something I'm going to mess it up because it's, I was in my twenties and decades ago, you know, now how many people since, but something about the ghost ceremony is what I was telling him to do. And he knew exactly the spot and I never been down there. I was describing to him and what he needed to do. I was describing the ceremony and he knew, and he had told me what it was. And he was avoiding it and he went and did it and healed. But in that ceremony, he said, you're facing all of those lives. You took their ghost, their spirit and the buddies that you had to leave behind or died around you. And you're letting that go. In essence, there's more to it than that. But there, he let that go so he could go on. These ghosts aren't haunting him. He isn't carrying that with him everywhere he goes, carrying these buddies and carrying these with him everywhere he goes. Can you imagine holding the body over your shoulder? Try running across the football field with that. Our vets did. Our vets did who it and were, and even just in training alone. But they did this for how many years thereafter? How many bodies? At what point do we let this go? Now it takes a toll. Here's what that toll looks like in the brain when they do a scan. Now, our people might see darkness, we might see the sickness, it depends on the person's gift, but we understand these things. You backed up, Steve, there you go. So go ahead and move forward there. This is the differential, and I'm not putting down Western or clinical. If you've ever heard me talk, you know that if you've seen some of my slides, I'll say how it is similar to. But the CDC says that Western and clinical has been ineffective for Indigenous communities. They have that on their website. I have to give credit to Kiawe Bone. He's the one that gave me uh, awareness to this. And that the only thing that has been effective for Indigenous communities is cultural based. But there is so many similarities in therapy. When I took some psychology years ago and since and looked at and did my research, there's a lot of similarities in their uh, approaches and theories that are similar to our ways but is it our ways is it what is unique for us and each tribe we're not all the same people and so it's different and some of our people are mixed I have daughters who are half Irish and the daughter who looks really Irish <laughs> she would dream old school Anishinaabek tricks on you I love it that creator was teaching the people to look within and see the spirit of the person hear the person Quit looking at what you see in front of you with your eyeballs and making your judgments. My daughter, who looked really Anishinaabek, was dreaming this old school Irish stuff that they don't, you can't even find them teaching that line. Oh, I love the creator and I love his love. He, he keeps t telling us and showing us. So <laughs> the daughter, if you knew, uh, she say my daughters come to therapy and they were your client. I'm a grandma now, they're all grown and stuff, but say they're your client and you got the daughter that looked really Anishinaabek and you knew her mama was a traditional native and you'd be trying to tell her what about this uh, medicine person, maybe you should go see your elder. She's going to get mad at you or she's going to know, she's going to read you and she's going to know you never saw her. You never saw her or heard a word she said and you just lost her. Now, if you look at my daughter who looked really Irish and you started telling her, oh, and got all about clinical with her. Same thing. You never saw her because she would have been wishing you had told her what about this elder or something. If you heard her, she would have come and shared with you and maybe even sat with that elder with you. Been open all of that and more. No one my girl anyway. <laughs> and so heartbreak syndrome. This is just grief. But how much of our people are going through different forms of heartbreak? When we think heartbreak right away, we think losing a, a, a spouse, a loved one, or a child. But we have more grief than that. Injustice, being re-victimized by the system, lateral violence. We have all kinds of this. Now, I know some people are saying about this heartbreak syndrome. They're saying, oh, we don't know about that. It's kind of just a theory, and then we can't prove it. But boy, can we? Can we? Can we look at our elders? Because we sure can. I could tell you a number of them what they died of. And I could tell you enough of their life story to let you know heartbreak syndrome is real and how it's interconnected and what it is impacting. 
And so how do we work with these people sincerely? So if we want to be effective, what are we looking at here? What are the needs, the diet changes, the advocacy, the getting real with them, their options and getting them involved in what it is that they can do for themselves. That's real empowerment when you when you're truly in a helpless environment how we can take care of ourselves and each other through it. Let's jump on to the next one. It isn't just psychological we're dealing with when we're dealing with a person suffering, right? So this goes in here and we're talking about uh, the, the release therapies. And that's what we already went into here. We're talking about from the prophecies and break into cycles to the innate knowledge. So the ability to, it's not, Yes, look at our statistics, look at our communities. It is gloom and doom. Since COVID, it's gotten a lot worse. It is bad. It's really bad. And But at the same time, we also have this hope. We have this truth to hold on to. But in order for it to come to light, and that's the reality people know, they can't do it alone. They get responses of, what do you think, you're too good? No, things like that. You know, so some of them might not say it, but they already know it. So we have to know our people and know what they're going to go through if they start doing better in healing. Family that's hiding a lot of truth that isn't ready to face, whether it's their traumas or the traumas they created because of the traumas they went through. And so you're a walking mirror that they don't want to look at. They don't want to look in the mirror. So how do we help that person? Because they don't know how to tell you all that sometimes. That's the real barrier right there. So how do we really help that person to be able to deal with that? Now, once they can deal with that, ha, so we get fear out of the way. Fear. Valid fear. But then when we show them how valid it isn't, <laughs> we disempower it. Oh, we also know that the bads will test you. The bads are going to come on them and say, hmm, you're not scared, are you? Wait till we hit you home like this. So again, how do we work with them and help them and support them in being true to their healing and the best version of themselves in a life and quality of life that they can have? So we can jump onto the next slide. And you're also talking about, I mean, how many people have lost a loved one to murder and missing or suicide, overdose, and you feel like, can I be enjoying life and feel real joy? You feel guilty for enjoying life when they're not here no more, right? So how many different things are they going through? Guilt of joy and want to live life. Everybody else going to tell them if they start living life, what are you too good? Too many truths in the face. People start getting scared. What are you going to be a tribal leader now? What are you? The yeah, <laughs> come on. So how many things is this person really dealing with, right? Before they can even deal with their issues that they're even there for in the first place. And the stuff that they're there for in the first place is usually imminent. It's not the underlying stuff, why it pushed it over on them, right? And again, you're looking at the body and the system and the brain and the chemicals involved and all of that. So boy, it's like your system is under attack. It don't catch a break. So what's most important for a system like that to help them out? So here's the limbic system and the part of the brain involved. These are all resources and, and, and links that are backing what I'm talking about here and putting them in different contexts and giving you other resources and links if you need them to change your programming, your grants, or how, just simply to help you understand, but also educate our people that are your clients. Give them some of this. They're not stupid. They could be developmentally three years old. <laughs> in ways emotionally and in other ways, but boy, are our people smart. That innate knowledge is real. Look at the treaties we made and we didn't even know English <laughs> that did. So educate them. If you're telling me you got this going on and you got that going on, look at it here, research your stuff. Now remind them one thing can sure look like another. So don't you buy into all this Western clinical and start diagnosing yourself. <laughs> and have that good laugh with them but tell them if you find something that is concerning that by all means let's talk bring it to me bring it to me let's look at it because maybe it is an issue they learn to trust themselves they learn to sort out what is hogwash and, and what they should have been listening to all along but what is happening to them 
and they could start recognizing it themselves and catching it and see how important it is then to, to start supporting that part of their system and taking care of themselves. And they can see it in their children and each other. Educate them. Educate them. Just because they're not therapists don't mean we shouldn't educate them. Let's educate them. They deserve to be talked to like they are smart. And let's jump on to the next slide. <laughs> so this here again is just at like all these slides here. Uh, it's talking more about it, showing you more about it, more about the system and the flow of things. So this to us, we see, um, I'll say I trip up on principles because they matter. The principles matter. Principles matter to our people. Look at the 13 grandfather teachings. Principles matter. But then there's also the teaching of what is, a point of letting go. But what is matter if not something that becomes solid? That principle was not solid. It was but energy. It was but a moment. But it becomes solid within as our chemistry here moves through our being, our system. And it becomes matter as it becomes sickness, as it becomes choice in our next steps and the consequences of. Whether it's to our, oh, yep. I'm going to interrupt just a moment. Me Folks, which? with, with uh, um, as Teresa talks about matter, understand that all of this is actually relative. Most of matter is just space. The, the connection in the most basic form of matter, we say, is the atom. In a way, it isn't because the most basic form of mass in the universe is the neutrino. None of us have ever seen a neutrino. Neutrinos move through us as if we don't even exist, as if we're the Milky Way. That's, um, I found science to be a lot more fun than I thought it would be. One of the uh, origin stories of the Lakota Dakota has to do with the Ini, the rock nation. And so we still, Inipi, we still go into the Ini's lodge and said that the first form of life was, was this rock, this stone. And yet this stone became the basis of life for all the forms of life that we call living, which includes rocks, which includes earth and air and fire and water. And so I, I bring up this thing about matter because, because all of us are equally connected to earth through gravity. And gravity, I found, is really quite complex. It seems so simple. If I roll off the couch, I end up on the floor. If I roll off the floor, I end up on the sidewalk. If I roll off the sidewalk, I end up on the ground. Gravity, won't. I won't end up out in the moon and the stars and space. That's for my mind, my spirit, my imagination, not my body. Because gravity will always hold my body. And yet when we start to talk about spirit, so to me, gravity is, is part of spirit. It's what connects us to Unchimaka, to the earth. All of us are earth and water and fire and air. When my kids tell me they need something, I know they don't. They need earth, air, fire, and, and water. Those things we need to sustain life. So I encourage people to realize that each of us are equally close to Unchimaka, to Grandmother Earth. Each of us are equally close to Tunkashla Wakantaka, to uh, Ate Wakantaka. Each of us are equally close to creation, to creator. And I encourage people to love the life within, to not, to not uh, operate out of fear, operate out of love. And I, I did put in the comment section that that I used to think that hate was the opposite of love, but I realized that fear really erodes and corrodes love. And what Teresa's calling the bad ones, they, they love to jump on fear. And we do too. We're, we're very dramatic species. Oh my, do you ever want to meet some dramatic people, come to, come to Indian community and meet us? But I found that that wasn't just true of Indians. Becky and I worked with white people for a few years because it seemed at IHS, White people would always come and practice on us for a few years, then leave <laughs> and become our friends. We would adopt them and everything. So we decided to practice on white people. And we were surprised to find that white people are just as messed up as Indian people. What a shock. <laughs> 
And it's really just because we're people that our culture is really protective. And so realize that all of us are spiritual. Gravity is an expression of spirituality. So is love. So is fear. So is uh, hope. Those are expressions of spirituality. So I encourage people to have compassionate curiosity about what's going on. And don't, I was so disappointed, Ethleen, that we didn't have one crazy horse or sitting bull, gyri or sulci, bump or lump in our, in our brain. All of us named after white men, Wernickes, and every part of our brain, every dip and every, every bump was named after some white man, not white women, just white men. What a surprise. But our, our brain, as Teresa so well has shared, is so much more than just that two and a half to three and a half pounds that sits on top of our neck. In fact, all of our, our sensory system, all of our central nervous system, all of that parasympathetic, sympathetic, limbic, all of those systems are a part of our brain, but it actually even goes beyond that. And so I, I mentioned that the bulk of mass of the universe is not matter that you and I can touch. It's, it's a neutrino. It's a matter that you and I can't even see. And yet the most basic component of, of molecules, molecular life, what we call life, uh, are atoms. And those atoms connect in remarkable ways. It's, it's fascinating how everything's connected. And that connection, which I'm calling spirituality, is just as important as the matter. So when you learn something in science, don't limit yourself to what, what you learned. You might be able to learn something through culture too. Spirit can teach, spirit does teach, gravity teaches. So does pain, so does joy, so does hope, so does prayer. And I, I liked Alfred Whitehead Sr. used to get angry when people would translate um, Tunkash Lavakantaka as great mystery. That would irritate him. He'd say it might be mysterious, but that's why we fast and pray. That's why we go in the sweat lodge. That's why we pray with the Chinupa. That's why we hook up to the tree is to understand better this unseen part of our life. And it's really, really important to have a good relationship with that unseen part of our life. So I encourage people because I find, and again, I, I, I mean no offense. If I cause offense, I, I kind of apologize, but life is offensive. Every day I, I, I get rid of good food. <laughs> That's offensive. It stinks. Shit stinks. And, and so waste products stink. But in, in this life, um, uh, we're going to face hard, hard, difficult times. And those are as important as the easy times, the smooth times. We learn from the things that don't work out. We learn from the things that grieve us. We learn so much, and it informs us so much about the value of, of the living, but also the value of those that are deceased and the values of those that aren't even born yet that will be among us soon enough. And so we need to consider all of these directions. And so each of you is as spiritual as anyone else. Each of you, just as you're as connected to the earth as anybody else. So, so listen as one who cares, as one who loves life. Thanks, Teresa. Migrant Doc Foster. And so as he had said too, you know, it is beyond all of that. And jumping back in here that chemistry where thought goes goes a chemical so we're not just dealing with the mind and 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 as i was saying and he was talking about we're dealing with spiritual issues we're spiritual people when you're dealing with indigenous even if the individual and this is the way my elders would see it too even if for some reason they decide not to go traditional ways and maybe they don't believe in culture we look at DNA, we look at chemistry, we look at makeup, and their being is still talking to them, but they're just disconnected from it and not listening. And they have the right to that choice. And it doesn't mean they won't find maybe Falun Dafa, Falun Gong, or maybe they'll find Buddhism or something that is still resonating and helping them. But sometimes in, in, in each, there's different tribes that got this Wendigo. We got them too, right? I mean, a lot of our teaching has been misinterpreted since kind of like the Bible has been rewritten to the king, the version of it, King James, you know, things like that. But lock it's lost throughout the way. When you think about a Wendigo, it, all of a sudden it's this being. 
that's in the woods and he comes and he takes over you and devours and devours and devours. That's what the story become. But the old ones would tell you that this Wendigo would come in here because you had an opening. You had an opening, you had a weakness. But the Wendigo preyed upon your mind. Some people it's the heart, some people it's physical weakness, different beings prey upon different things. Hoofed man likes to prey upon vanity. <laughs> Things like that, sexuality. We have beings that preyed upon that. If you didn't have respect for women, the dear woman might get you. <laughs> and stories of it, stories of it, evidence of it that this once was and maybe still is. But the thing here now with the Wendigo, he preyed upon your mind, it was your weakness. It was icy cold. Now, yes, this is now simulating. This is starting to sound a lot like uh, a narcissist, eh? Icy cold heart. <laughs> or somebody just simply detached from because their heart got hurt so bad, their mind had to protect them from it. A victim, a victim. But if they stayed on that path and they grew up, what did they turn into? Because everything progresses, see? So this window goes, goes in there, there's a hole, there's an opening. Just inside that person's head. And they start to devour. Devour can look like different things. Devour your heart, devour your thoughts, devour your moments, devour your ability to be in the present and enjoy your blessings because you are so bombarded right now and blown away, knocked down by your butt handed to you by whatever blow this cold hearted one just did that's absent minded devour until it hits the whole camp of the people until everybody is suffering until all hearts are turned icy cold how did the old ones get rid of it when to go there's different stories but one of my favorite is how they would trick them out into the open and in the open as he was devouring they put that deer bone broth in the middle there when he drank that deer bone broth down they said they brought him down to size don't that sound like giving somebody a humbling? Just saying. Brought him down to size. Brought him down to earth. Does that mean now he's got a face and feel? Or her. Him or her. Not just men. <laughs> okay. So just because it's 2022 going on 2023, don't mean we don't. Oh, we still see hoofed men in our woods. We still see they're still around. We still see the shadow man who came with the white people. Our people still have sightings of them that never even knew about it. And then when they tell you what has been bothering them and they're, they're embarrassed and they feel like you're, they're, you're going to call them crazy. They end up finding out that the people know about that being as they just described that being to a T and they already knew about him and they tell them what, what that being is called and what they pray upon. And they go, oh, my God, and they don't feel alone in it because now they realize this is real. I'm not crazy. But what is it preying upon? So we got to deal with that weakness. But then what is the issue? You can deal with the weakness like you can smudge out a house for somebody and get all them bads out of there. Have them spirits that you use in the smudge come in there and chase them bads out and bring that place to a good place because those spirits with that smell but it's also the spirit self, what they're connected to, <clears throat> why you start to feel good in this way. Because what you're, you're bringing into your home, back into your home, that should have been there. So it chases them beds out. But the thing is, if the people are still allowing these toxic ones in, who brought those beds in with them, or if they are still engaging in this dysfunctional lifestyle themselves, they're feeding the bads and not the good. So the bads are going to keep coming in there. So that means we have to deal with the issues. See, you can't just chase the bads out or bring that wind to go that's in them now, or they turned it to back down to size and humble them. We have to deal with the issue that got them there. The real issue. And it's usually compounding complex issues. And in the country, one, the interconnectedness teachings, but two, the generational trauma and dysfunction. And if they're a city and then it's never been home, geez, you're talking a lot of disconnect, a lot of wonder, a lot of uh, uh, weakness to be played upon by tricksters. And some of them are very gifted and we're meant to come home.
share their gifts, share their being. So the bads know that they don't know better. These people suffer as well. Just because they never been home don't mean they're not suffering in an Indian country story. I, I love some of my Irish friends. They tell me it's an Irish story. <laughs> It's not an American story. It's an Irish story. We're like that. We so can relate with them. 150 years, they came and put them in them church schools and took their language and, and changed their food to potatoes and a potato famine, literally worked up to bone, finger and bone, because they, you couldn't grow potatoes over in Ireland, how that land was, what they did to them. And they then 150 years later, they came and did it to us Native people. They were clans people over there. Boy, we can relate. They got the little people, but there's are different. We got so many different kind of little people, our people. We got, they all got different jobs and roles that they do gifts. Some are good, some are bad balance teachings. Everybody is so, so obsessed with the bads. Oh, the elders would look at them and wonder what they're feeding. <laughs> Why are you seeing the bad little people? Why are you scared? What's going on with you? Ha. But see now Western or clinical say you're shaming. <laughs> what is our ways here's the differential okay maybe a little bit in why what's an effective and been ineffective go on youtube and watch a slapping medicine man and see how many of our people laugh it up and are saying they wish they had one that feedback will tell you right there are, are we about speaking up and getting real with people or 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 oh no no don't shame and coddle this isn't, this isn't going to work. In some situations, oh, by all means. By all means, anything else is inappropriate. Oh, by all means, you coddle. By all means, you, you walk delicately with them. By all means, you pick them up and carry them. <sighs> Everything is black and white. See the individual and the group. And watch where they're going. We always watched each other. We knew what was going on. This is our ways. So we're working therapy. How would we work with the person that way? Teresa? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Um, I had to plug in my microphone, sorry. Um, uh, we, I know we're coming down to just a few minutes left, but it takes me a long time to think about what I'm gonna say before I say it. And a lot of times the, the opportunity has already passed, but I think looking at this, this whole subject of the brain and how it works and and, trauma one of the things i think that traditionally what what gets left out is that that was always explained and it was explained in a way that made uh, a connection with what was happening in a person's life and how it connected with what was happening in their body so i know for the blackfeet they would send the bear out in order to help heal in order to help uh, a person deal with whatever it is they were struggling with if they were in the hospital. And my cousin does that. Um, but one of the things that I think we need to rem remember is that those that have gone before us, even with all of the difficulties and the um, struggles and the challenges that they had, they survived. And sometimes what we lost in the process was, yes, it was traumatic. We lost a lot of our, our um, sometimes our, our language and our, our traditions and cultures if they, and now they're coming back. They came out of the, out of hiding and those people that have, that hid those and kept those safe are bringing those back. And so our young have the opportunity to connect with that again. But I, I always tell the people I work with is they always have control over what they do. They have control over what they think. They have control over how they approach things and to draw on those that have gone before them for the strength and resiliency to address things. And when they come to us in, as therapists, they come because we provide a sense of hope. And... Um, and I'll borrow a saying that Dan used to always say, I tell my, my people that I work with, I work with primarily kids, um, as I tell them, you know, I can't change what happened to you. I can't change the past, but I can walk with you as we find, find the solution. And you have the ability and you have the strength and you have the resiliency to be able to find that. So it doesn't need to stay traumatic. You don't forget it. 
but you flip it around in your mind so that it's something that is that you can learn from. Because if those that have gone before us weren't able to do that, we wouldn't be here. We would not be here. And so we have the opportunity to provide hope in a therapeutic setting um, where the client is at, what they provide for you. Um, and and do that in a way that they have a choice to take that control and that power back. And for me, I explain a lot of the stuff that is going on in the brain and it, how the chemistry works, how, you know, it affects different parts of their body. And like you were saying, you know, how do you feel this? Where do you feel this? And helping them identify that because as soon as they can, then they can have control over that. They take that power back. It's not someone else reacting, it's their reacting. And that makes a huge difference. They no longer feel hopeless and helpless. So that's kind of my contribution. So as Dan says, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> Miigwech, Becky Foster. I'm so glad to have her here too. Every time she speaks, I'm just thankful. And Dan too. <laughs> Even him out. <laughs> I think my reaction shows that truth about her. It, and that I think is the difference. And it isn't, I mean, we're taught what we're taught and we're, we do the best we can with good intentions until we can learn better. And when we learn better, then hopefully we're doing better. So let's leave ego aside or check our dissonance at the door <laughs> and be here about be here about really helping the people. We have to open our minds to things and look for absolute truth. Look for, does it apply? Great. But see the uniqueness and how it applies. And if it doesn't, throw it out. It isn't for you. I'm not offended. I'm thankful that you're looking for truth so you can truly help. If we could jump on the next slide. As somebody had asked if I was familiar with the ACEs study, and I am familiar with it. And um, I appreciate it, actually, the ACEs study and, our, and what it looks like on there. Um, but it it stops. It seems, from at least my understanding, it stops right there. It looks like gloom and doom, the results for an Indigenous person. Where is the next step in doing like what doc, Dr. Becky Foster said? You know, letting them know, okay, then if this, this assessment is saying it looks like you uh, ha are having these issues and it looks like then you are susceptible for a high rate of this. And so let's see how in an educating them on their system and what's been happening to them, like she said. And then they are more active and maybe more prone in taking those life-changing choices. Changing diet, food is more addictive than any drug. And the, the excuse is there that everybody's buying into. If you don't have budget, you can't afford to eat healthy. But that's not true. I lived that to know it's not true. It's just that the process of changing the cupboard over is the costly part. So you, sometimes it's easier to slowly change what you're using over, but then this helps you change your, your adjust to the diet changes, adjusting to it by then. So your palate, your taste buds are changing. <laughs> and so that's kind of a good thing then. But once that cupboard is changed over, you'll realize you actually need less of what to eat and the things that you need bigger portions of, the vegetables and stuff like that. What is cheaper? And that you feel full because a lot of the things that you need more of are more fiberish, and your body got the nutrients it needed. So it's not tugging at you an hour later, like Chinese food saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry again. And you're eating a whole bag of chips, right? So, <laughs> and then your body is saying, Man, you just did this damage. I never got the nutrients of what I needed. And now you did this damage. Now I need some nutrients to fix that. So I'm hungry, I'm hungry again. And it's tugging from the inside. Imagine your chest is giving a pull up there. And so, and then your brace is like, I got to eat and then your quick fix of something what is that a hot dog some mac and cheese you know something quick you know and it's cheap and you can't afford you're like a windigo in a way <laughs> what the heck is going on here and then the swelling happens the intestines of the body says i can't i can't absorb nothing more and i can't get rid of the baths and now you're sick and you're wondering why 
Oh, geez. And you can't think so clearly. And look what the dairy does. You go look up my uh, webinar I did on diet impacts, the history of the diet impacts on us. I did for this organization here. And you'll see, and you'll see the resources on that. And just give me an email and shout out, and I'll send you those slides gladly and the resources and everything else. <clears throat> so, as you can see, these slides go on, and I, I want to believe that every one of you here can understand this kind of stuff that what's on these slides. So if you look at the slide deck yourself, you'll be able to understand, and I want you to know that I am always, in almost every webinar, just uh, scratching the surface on stuff. So you, you'll be able to add to these slides. What more? What more? Um, and now here, I feel, to me, I like the pun of here, the blindsided by harsh realities and not thinking about the eyes and the optic and the brain and how the interconnected is. I'm going to throw one at you. What about a blind person going through trauma? How does that impact their brain and their body? There we go with the gifts, huh? There we go with the individualism and the uniqueness. How they're interpreting and feeling and what other sensories are actually picking up and what part of those brains, what part of their brain in there that they're using, smell, sound, vibration, touch, things like this. That's connected to different parts of the brain, but then interconnected to the sensory area of the brain altogether, but still it's something different and unique. So what is that triggering in them and doing to them and then the physical health? What is it doing to their physical health? Which then is triggering back because if their physical health starts being hypersensitive and very raw and very painful and inflamed, now they're losing a sensory that's very important to them. How scary is that? A blind person being turned blinded on the inside even. So that's a very helpless feeling. So to think about the different needs and what's going on here and uh, our elderly and their vision getting really bad. I can't think of uh, long ago, our elderly being blind, even stories of it or needing glasses. We had different kind of health. So what's going on? Not that they have a uh, 2020 vision when they were 80 years old, but they sure didn't need glasses like we do today. How many of us here are wearing glasses at what age? A lot of that is diet as well. You know, and when I talked to the eye doctors back in Ju July about the, uh, the optical portion of it, I did ask, I said, I, I believe that we can heal that too. <laughs> Give me a laugh. I will be darned if a study didn't come out about that now. And I sent it to Steve Stein and Doc Foster. <laughs> Right after, shortly after, spirit just keeps going, you're right, girl, you're right, girl. But now I, Doc Foster educated me and reminded me of something I remembered hearing many years ago. You guys need hundreds of different studies until it's something you can take credible because one study then later gets disputed by another study. But let's use our critical thinking to take a look at stuff here because we're searching for real truth and to really help. Can we jump on the next slide? And I seen Doc Foster come back on cam. I'm guessing he might want to jump in there and I hope he does if he wants to. So this here is something that come to me. Again, I give all credit to spirit and our ancestors and any knowledge I have and anything that ever came. I'm not with that kind of smarts. This stuff comes from spirit. Yes, it comes from your life walk. You're, you're, you can pick up tools and you're not going to know what they're for or how to work them unless you've been walking that walk and using those tools. But it always goes back because it, it wouldn't be nothing these things come literally from spirit and so to stop step back talk with spirit follow the circle teachings put your simo tobacco knack them knack them all whatever you you use down your corn powder your corn flour corn corn pollen that's it corn pollen down things like this and so this here is how we can stop it when we're in the cycle of it at different stages of it, what we can do, how we can catch ourselves. So like Dr. Becky Foster was talking about educating them and getting to know like Doc Foster, Daniel Foster was talking about recognizing the different parts of self. And now the therapeutic approach that he's been trying to bring to my attention and I've been fighting just hard because I really am so pro-cultural <laughs> is the internal family systems. And, they're, and at least internal family systems recognizes uh, the different parts of self and how important. And we know that be there's snow on the ground so I can say it. And boy, it's snowing out right now. The Winnabuju teachings for us. Nana Bush. <laughs> Why the parts of self sure are important that we always did listen to parts of ourselves. But not in a foolish way. 
to be smarter than, to be smarter than. And yeah, find a humor in it, laugh itself, but to move forward in a good way. So this internal family systems, I, I got to, to see <clears throat> this guy come on and do a training um, on a white guy. I don't want to give too much more information about him to throw him under the bus, but I didn't appreciate his reaction to things. He's not for ending country. The internal family systems from what Doc Foster has sent me that I've seen, it does look pretty good if you have to use a Western or clinical approach because you're bound by billing and what kind of therapy you're using. I think that is pretty close to ours, but definitely refer them to traditional folks for different aspects and needs and be open to that. Um, but internal family systems is pretty good. I would prefer that if you want to learn about it. I, I know that both the fosters have a lot on their plates, so I'm a real jerk for this, but I'm going to throw them under the bus and in front of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> go to them to learn about it i would rather one of them do the training on this for in country because they get into the country and they could show how this internal family systems would actually be effective versus somebody who doesn't know our people i think that they're best and they may know other people who are good and direct you in that direction they got a lot on their plate so understand that but i really think that if it was one of them training folks on how to work this this therapy approach, um, they could actually make it effective. You know, I think it would be good then. So that's my words. And I had no rates to do that, but I did. And so <laughs> throwing them and, under the bus. Teresa, I think you'll have to, Dan would have to do it because I haven't even had a chance to read the book and stuff yet with all the stuff that's going on in our, our, in our lives. But, um, but but from what I know about it, it's a great system. And how I approach that is I don't think it needs to be all or nothing. And I think that if um, as therapists, if I have to do the billing and do their their um, DSM-5 TR codes, I'll do the billing so that they can get money back in the program so we can get the program running. That's how I think of it. The other way is I think that we can do, we can walk a fine line sometimes of incorporating both and if it's that's what our our clients need then then I'm more than willing to do that I'm I mean I'm helpful in that um and I prefer for them to use traditional uh ways of coping with with their their problems but uh, there are times that they're not even aware of what those may be and stuff and so in Indian country I know my cousin who's a Blackfeet um, bundle keeper and pipe carrier, when he would meet some of our Lakota and my Dakota relatives, and they would talk about different medicines, they were more than happy to incorporate what the other one had to offer um, because it worked. And so they were more than happy to take that in and, and use that if it worked. And so that's how I think of it. I just think of it as we're doing whatever we can to help with the the healing of whoever's sitting in front of us um, and doing it at a pace that they choose and stuff. So that's kind of what, how I view it. Maybe that's letting me off the hook, but um, but I find peace with that. Besides that, I went to a, a long years of school and suffered a lot to get that piece of paper hanging on the wall and um, am, am able to help people that I, that come in, came into my office and that was the white way of doing it. But if they needed help, that I couldn't provide those three little letters behind my name help get that for them. And I had no shame providing that. So anyway, that's a little off the track, but that's my view on it. Miigwech, Becky Foster. She, she is just, I don't, I don't know if you realize how much you did just help, even though we threw Dr. Dan Foster under the bus. <laughs> She just, I believe, helped to show you how you can do it, how you can implement, how you can build, how you can, you know, all these ways around. So she is a wealth of knowledge and, you know, a way for more support through this and through implementing the changes. And um, they're just such a team. I, I think that's just amazing. And we're blessed to have them. If we can jump onto the next slide. Now, when I first brought this slide, uh, Steve Stein had some worries, thought it might be triggering for some people. And if we got triggers, we need to face and deal with them. That's your weakness. You may be getting played upon. So let's deal with our triggers. It's great. It's great, but let's deal with them. But 
this is how a lot of our people feel when you don't know what's going on you don't know you have feel like you're so powerless and you feel helpless you feel all this injustice you feel like this a bag over your head so like dr becky foster was saying educating your client this takes the bag off and your eyes are opened and then lights are turned on and you can see around you and now you can see do i do i can i go left can i go right you start to see choices and options if we can jump to the next slide so it's very important to educate our people and what's going on with them um just because they're they're not going into psychology just because they're not a phd or have maybe only a third grade education my father only had third grade ed education as a residential school survivor he went to the, what they call the mush hole but it's the mohawk institute in ontario um and he had run away, run away, run away, run away. And uh, our CMPs would take him and bring him back. And he got the third grade education. But meanwhile, he'd be driving to Oregon to help heal uh, autistic girl, severely autistic girl by the Umatella people. And he was pick up somebody, throw out computer, 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 different states, find a computer on the side of the road, throw it out. And he picked pieces and parts he could build a computer. He was helping to heal our people. He got that autistic girl that the doctors said would be rocking and drooling and in a diaper for the rest of her life to end up in college. By the time he was done with her, she was in public school and then into the mainstream. You know, it isn't a, a magic pill. It took time. It took a few years of working with her, just a, a few years. He was only there for, I think, three years or some somewhere, give or take. You know, and she, she, she definitely did the testings and the different developmental things they do. She was a little pain for a while. <laughs> she was sure around games and stuff. As he brought her up, brought her up, brought her up. So definitely educate our people because they're not stupid you know he had third grade education but he could do something that these doctors were saying couldn't be done and so now we look at and that wasn't just he did so much beyond that don't don't let me uh do a disservice speaking on him like that um so here we're looking at this chart and it is showing the different impacts here so I'm sure you know you can read the chart and look at, but you're seeing the interconnectedness and you're, you're, you can start looking at maybe, and this helps them, this helps them to see too, um, to show them. So again, um, to educate them and we can make better choices because are we going to let this keep taking our lives? It's a choice. Are we going to let this keep taking our lives? And if it's a life you're stuck in, yeah, you can't come up out of it. You know, your loved ones are dying around you. Well, what can you do about that? They're making their choices, but it's still his home and it hurts. So what can we do? We can recognize as we're getting hit and what we're going to need to do to do self-care through it. This is the reality for a lot of our people in Indian country. On to the next slide, if you could. Miigwech. So when trauma surfaces again, because you know our, our statistics more than likely say that at some point you're going to be a victim of some sort, and even maybe elder abuse you're going to get later. Maybe you escaped all this victimhood, but you become an elder. You got elder abuse because just some old Indian in that nursing home or something, whatever it is. But we're looking at becoming revictimized in different ways, or when trauma surfaced, the memory of it, the interconnectedness of it, because other people are traumatized and didn't do their healing work. So something is triggering you to protect yourself because you've seen this before you know different kind of ways that trauma surfaces eh and so what these behaviors and our responses if again you educate them tell on us where we're at it tells that person how to catch themselves and so that way we don't self-destruct we don't make this a compound complex issue we didn't overreact we didn't push somebody away we didn't uh, misjudge which we're going to do anyway. I don't care who you are and how educated you are, how emotionally um, intelligent you are. It's going to happen. It's okay. But this is what's going to help us then to catch ourselves in it and make better choices, even stop and pull back like that, make prayers. So how can we respond if we don't know, you know, I don't want to make a judgment yet and shoot myself in the foot here. I don't want to hurt you if you're innocent in it. But if my no-betters are telling me I've seen this before, 
do I push them away and run away? Or am I putting something on them that don't belong there? Well, I can teach them to that. You know what? It's okay. You don't have to even explain yourself to them. Just say, I, you know, I got to go. I'll talk to you. I'll get, I'll get back in touch with you. And then when you get back in touch with them, you can decide. You don't even have to get back in touch with them. You don't owe them an explanation. But if you decide to get back in touch with them, now you can approach it with clear eyes healthy thinking and not some past trauma skewing your perspective and you can enjoy that situation in that moment and the lessons in it or you can have all these past ones attaching itself to it and blinding you right so how to stay in tune with all of ours if we can jump onto the next slide again trauma and after trauma a fixed or growth mindset the choice is ours so this is giving choice back if we can jump on, we're going to, I know our time's running short. We're just going to jump through slides now again, like we did last time, unfortunately. And the, so here facts, there's the truth, there's, there's the facts and then there's the truth. You know, we could say that our people in Indian country for the most part are sure looking like a bunch of dash darn narcissists and corruptions all over the place. Oh, maybe that's the facts. We have the highest worst rates up. Maybe that's the facts. It sure looks like we're all a bunch of dysfunctional folks. But let's tell these people who don't know the backstory what's really going on. And there's the truth. <laughs> what are we really dealing with and working with? Okay. So what's really happening here? Is that narcissist really just a victim? But if they're creating victims right now, then we got to deal with that. Those victims come first. But they're going to keep going out creating victims if we don't deal with them. But are they really a narcissist? Or are they a product of this system? So what are we really dealing with? So we got to know the backstories. Not sure if somebody's got an open mic or. Uh... Did we did we lose Teresa? Oh, we did. There. All right, I'm back. Okay. Oh, there you are. <laughs> my, my battery went we on we lost you. We it went silent. <laughs> Boy, you guys got lucky for a minute. I gotta catch a breather. <laughs> if we can jump onto the next slide. Yes, that does stand for something. If we back some slides up, you'll see that oh, slide yeah. had that, those yep, acronyms there on there. So when if you ask for the slide deck, you'll get that. Back her up a couple more, back her up, back her up, back her up. And it'll show it to them and it, it's got it's got the the circle teaches a medicine wheel there. That's what you yeah. see all yeah. the writing all over it, and you'll see that. That's where I was talking about giving credit to spirit from in our ancestors and our ways for everything. You keep going forwards. Going back. I know, I know. There we go. What's happening? Is that, where, is that where you want it? No, no, no. The circle, the circle, the hoop. Oh, now I've seen. Now I've got it. I was trying to go back to the stop. <clears throat> Where do you want me, T? You'll see the circle, the hoop. With all mm. that right. Is it back or forward? Um, your neuroplasticity of the brain, you went for it. Okay. For that one, yeah. So there. you go back, backwards, backwards, back, back, back. Still back. back. Okay. There, right there. Yeah, see, got it. There. I just didn't go back far enough. Circle hoop with the writing on it. There you go. See S. Yeah, stop. There's the stop. Yeah. East to sunrise. Step back, and then uh, the the T. You know, is to talk with spirits. Follow the circle teachings. Put your sema nakama, knikknik, whatever you use. Corn pollen dawn. And yeah, uh, there it is. 
So there it is. And that's, and that's to help them track. So again, educating themselves and each other in, you know, what's happening, the spiritual versus an emotional <clears throat> having a human experience these emotions are tools to utilize and they're wonderful but we don't let them take over overpower and make us sick that's where imbalance is coming in so you know how we can um with some say be emotionally intelligent um or developmentally emotionally <clears throat> appropriate um so we can go forward some more now back back to catch up where we were where we left off the cycles that continue to attack the brain function, sickness, and disease. So, um, you know, again, these slides are just showing here, you know, all the different parts that are being impacted. But mind you, again, if they are being hit, if the people are suffering physical illness because of, you know, different things that they've been going through, right now it's a weakness only because, like I was just saying, the imbalance, the imbalance. So, if that's the part of them that's been kicking in and kicking in, then that is a gift and it's a strength and it needs to be strengthened and utilized in the appropriate way. It's been an inappropriate, it's been an assault upon it. So it would learn appropriately. If it is a person who their, their liver, their, their, their bilirubins are really high from distress because if they take it to the liver, they take it like a punch to the gut. <laughs> and that's how that trauma is hitting them. So yes, it's of, of impacting their brain for sure. If their liver and their bilirubins are high, you can guarantee, about guarantee it's been impacting and creating brain issues by the time it's having organ issues. But then that means they're one to take it to the gut, you know, a side punch, kaboom. And so if they're taking it to the gut like that, and they're one of those like that, that's, their, that's one of their gifts. So how do we use that gift appropriately? How do we let the gut tell us what's up and what do, what do we do? How do we listen to it? How do we reconnect appropriately and listen to it? And how can we feel good about our response to it? Because we've been responding in this way for so long because it didn't feel so good to respond the other way. Why is it okay? Healthy boundaries, healthy filters, all of this is indicative of, right? So we, we go down the checklist and see where we're at with that or what's the issue, what's the dilemma. Maybe somebody came back with a really good comeback on them. <laughs> and they come back with a really good comeback you never heard before. That's what they're struggling with, why they've been responding the way they have all along since. So if we can jump to the next slide. And that's the only dang dilemma. They're going to rock it, rock life after that. It might be that simple. We're overcomplicating things. Um, so here, this, and you know, this is so funny. If you guys know our teachings about the Lakota and Anishinaabek, how they were enemies of ours for so long. And here you look at the slide and you see Anishinaabek and Lakota side by side, or I didn't mean to have Lakota below us like that anyway. But the reason why Anishinaabek is first is because I'm Anishinaabek. <laughs> I can only speak for myself. And then I put the Lakota because I know their story here from what I've heard of it over the years um, also backs it. So even for tribes who were once enemies, we have similar backings and similar teachings and ways, but just totally different, totally different in our how the story goes, but is teaching the same kind of the balance teaching. So if they developed or were born with a disability, creator is going to gift them an ability or a gift. So that way you get to be. And so what is that gift? What is that ability? How do we work with it? And then how do we support the healing of the disability uh, that became or they were born with? And so then how do we, so we're looking at supporting the both, right? Uh, so not one is pulling the other down or creating more issues, right? So let's jump on to the next one here, if we can. And there's that neuroplasticity restructuring of the brain. When I first started trying to reach out to MDs and all of that and, and ask neuroscience groups, hey, do a fMRI scan of the brain and ask them this batch of questions. And if they're, if they're a person that's uh, healthy thinking and things like this or not having these physiological issues in the brain, you're going to see these areas of the brain light up because that's the areas that would respond to that kind of a question. And if they're a person who has been through trauma or hasn't learned 
learned uh, healthy ways of thinking, it's going to go to these different parts of the brain. And if it's the trauma because of these chemicals over in that same part of the brain that was interpreting the situation and, and seeing and digesting the situation, you're going to see this kind of a probably a clouded area, gray area or something where it should have been lighting up. And that might be a fried out kind of, so to speak, area of the brain because these powerful ke chemicals that were flowing through there would look like a thunder being central nervous system up into the brain, kept going, kept going, trying to say, hey, 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 to self. And self says, hey, back. This is all I got. This is all I know what to do with it. And so it's pulling from these areas. And so different people in different areas, you're going to find us. And I said, but the thing is, our teachings like that Lakota lame boy, in our teachings is in Anishinaabek about the balance and about the gifts, that it can heal itself. Our teachings said that it can heal itself. So how can we do this? And we know food is medicine, diet is important, was the, the most biggest part of our culture. We moved camp for it. We, we went to war for it. Our food is so important. We had feasts for it, celebrations for it, give thanks for it, look forward to it, those stories about it. You know, their creation stories, everything there is, is are, are very important to us. And so, what can we do our environment restoring our peace our sacred space so this is your assessments this is what we're looking at to help those people and this could help then the brain to start to heal because it's going to be those chemicals are still in there and then that flushing out i seen a new study came out on, on december 19th from a neuro neuroscience group um, I posted on my LinkedIn page there and it just came out talking about that, the flushing out, the cleansing of self, the new beginning, the new day, every day is a new day, a new beginning. Yes, we know we get thousands and millions of new cells in different areas of our body, depending every day we're, we're wake up with it. If you rest it properly and resting properly doesn't mean just going to bed at this certain hour. It also means having peace within having peace with your past, eating properly, all these things, what supports that being in that system. Okay. And not having some dark being in their bedroom, talking to them, whether they hear them with auditory ears, or is just putting negative thoughts in their head that are coming out of nowhere and won't stop plaguing them. So how do they deal with that? Because now you're going to rest properly and the brain can flush itself. See the part of that cycle is cleansing. And so if it's cleansing, if it's not, we're going to have a whole mess of other problems where we see high blood pressure, stress, stroke. Well, that's what they're saying. It's because when the brain cleanses, it comes down through the neck is what the science just found out December 19th. I posted that neuroscience uh, news, posted that article on that study. And so they're just finding these things. But we understand them. We understand them. And then so they laughed at me about this neuro. And, they, and then here the study come out right before I did the webinar in July. Neuroplasticity. And they're talking about uh, neuro regeneration. The brain can too heal itself, you guys. See, we're not stuck. We're not stuck. The story doesn't end here. That's the part now. And this is the part of where we create treatment plants. Doesn't end here. This is the exciting part. Okay. But we're learning a new gift, we're pulling on an old gift. That's all new learning. You're 60, 70 years old. You're dealing with a 40-year-old. You're dealing with an Indian country that's tired and has no will left. Many of them, many of them. And I, I want what I want now and what you want. It isn't always what you need. <laughs> so what are we really dealing with and why? Why? Why do we feel that way? Why are we to that state that we're backing up and we're dealing with that issue? Okay. And are we thinking clearly to be that way? Or is that hyper emotional response? What's happening in our diet? I bet you they got dairy. I bet you they got a lot of dairy and sugars in their diet. I'm telling you, it's very serious, the impact that it has upon our people and our reactions because of it. We're talking suicide. We're talking all kinds of things. Very, very serious. Go and do the studies on it and see. And watch yourself. Watch your children. I've seen it with my own eyes. Can we jump onto the next slide? So there's the fun facts. We all got to be little dorks and enjoy too, but here's some fun facts. And um, if we can jump onto the next slide. I know we're way out of time here and going over and I appreciate everybody that stayed. And here's the, the neuroplasticity, working with the gifts now or new and um i'm gonna jump on the next slide so this gets into a little more and again feel free to reach out to me
And here's these different areas of the brain, or as Doc Foster calls it with the internal family systems, the pieces and parts. <laughs> so when we look at it again, mapping out to help them find, as Dr. Becky Foster said, um, to educate them in the way she does. Are you having, is this bad and you're missing these things? Are you reacting these ways or are you exceeding at it? So it's gonna help them map out themselves. If, if your health budget isn't gonna allow an MRI of their brain to find if they have this issue or many of our people don't want the government having a scan of our brain. We have a distrust of the government and validly so. So if you're dealing with that, then how can we have evidence-based that they may have traumas, physiological impacts to their brain? Well. Let's start mapping it out. Let's start looking at it together or by yourself and you figure it out and what you can do and let's go from there. See, let's jump on the next slide. So there's, there's always a way, there's always a way. <laughs> there's always a way to figure this out here. And then healing for the, the whole, again, mind, body, and then the nervous system, the basics needed and their partners. We have partners. We have that dance in our teachings, the balanced teachings. <laughs> and so this is what we're looking at. And the partners are just as important. And I'm just breaking it down for you here. So we're looking at this here. And the, the, the vitamin Bs they need, well, that's B1, B12, and B complex, and a folic acid. That's its partner. In order for your body to be absorbing that, you better put some folic acid in there if you want the bees, if we're having a problem. So maybe they're having a, uh, they have a vitamin B deficiency, but the, is it just simply that they don't have enough folic acid in their diet? And so here's some of the foods that that looks like. The bees is, is uh, salmon and tuna, and the folic acid looks like spinach and dark greens. Now, if they got kidney problems, we're going to have to look at them dark greens, right? And then iron and vitamin C, if you have an iron deficiency or the, you, your body has a hard time absorbing that and it really hurts the gut. But if you take some vitamin C about a half hour beforehand or, or better 40 minutes beforehand, but don't wait too long after, your body will absorb that vitamin C and that it won't hurt it, or that iron and it won't hurt as bad. Now here's the foods. And this is just some of them. You have them do the research because which ones do they like, don't they like, which ones in their, in their budget, which one's available at the store and isn't. The omega-3s or fatty acids, the good oil, the good oil fats. Now, when you break this down and look at it, really, how much is this is really cultural diets? <laughs> how many tribes cultural diets is it? You know, and so that's what we're missing is our cultural diets when you think about it how important it is but we have a lot of vitamin d deficiencies we have a lot of this amino acids really helps the brain to heal eh? really helps the brain to heal and the creator made everything interconnected in such a way you know um that it's almost a textbook for dummies he made you walnuts it looks like the brain things like that so you know what do you need what are you having struggles with and then all those next slides are all just kind of resources for you and some of them studies to back what I'm talking about here from credible sources. Um, so it is, I should help rewrite grants, programs for you, changing programs to validate what you're doing and things like that, or, and to educate your clients, do groups and things like that, um, to show them and to see, here you go. So one, one type of uh, article might resonate with them or be it more in layman's terms than another. So it's kind of materials for that. But once they get going on it, know what they're looking for and keywords, they'll, they'll go off on, on their own and figure start figuring stuff out. And that's good. It's a part of what they need to do. It's a part of what they need to do. And they might start talking to each other about it, right? So I got quite a few um, slides there full of resources for you and links and stuff like that. So utilize them as you will. And um, that's for you to do with you, what you will with it. And I really thank you all for your time and your patience. And I hope this has been of help in whatever way. I would hope that um, I know the slides are not copyrighted. If you want to uh, use the work, yes, you can, and you can, and, and I hope that you do, and I hope that you cater it to your tribe or your community or the topic you're working on, so alter it by all means, by all means, 
this is here is to help the people that's why I do what I do and so cater it and make it to the uniqueness of the teaching that you're doing you, you to bring back yours bring back theirs you know um by all means you you go right ahead and um and that's what it's for an incredible yeah. an incredible resource uh, uh compilation so uh, we're going to make these slides available to folks yep. you can uh, use them as handouts anything kind of imagery i use i did cite the source where i got that from and then it's down in the references there the reference yes. part is all cited so that way if you use them as handouts you can reference so you don't get in trouble as well so, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. so it's all right there for you dear you help <laughs> And that's why it's there. It is there to help the people. And yes, individualize it, alter it by all means. And if you, you need me to jump on for anything or clarify anything, you go ahead, get a hold of me, email me. Um, I'm open to help to work. And if your program don't have money, I do stuff volunteer. And, um, you know, I, you know, it is whatever it is. And um, I just, if you can afford to, you know, yeah, I take whatever, but um, it's just, I, I'm glad to help. We need to help each other. It's that time, eh? And when you get to help, it's a, it's a gift. Well, with, with that, I want to just, uh, uh, we're a little over, appreciate everybody staying on. Uh, I want to turn the floor over to uh, Becky Foster, Dr. Becky Foster, to to close us out here. I, I think Dan must have either lost his connectivity, Becky, or uh, he may have had another meeting. So, but uh, the floor is yours. Th thank you again, everyone. Hi. So I just want to leave you with a short prayer. Um, Ayo apistatuki, ayo napinatusi, calling the old man's son, calling the source of life. We welcome you. We ask you to bless us and be with us this day. Help us this day. Be kind to us. Show us all that is good and all that is gentle, all that is honest. Calling to be kind to our children, our fathers, our mothers, our grandparents, all now to be saved, to have a long and sacred life, and to help us face whatever we need to today with a strong heart and a clear mind. Ayo Napi Natusi. Help. <clears throat> thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much to Teresa and to Dan and to Becky. Um, absolutely uh, incredible uh, presentation. We we didn't we had to rush through those slides again, but sometimes that's the way it works. Uh, that's okay. We'll uh, make these slides available in a PDF. Look for your follow up email. Until next time, please stay safe, stay healthy, and stay connected. And we are going to take a break um in january so we're going to hit the pause button and reset some things here at the center so we'll not have a january behavioral health webinar uh, but we'll resume back in february so uh until then uh, we'll, we'll see you mm -hmm.